I think one of the most user-friendly and feature-rich backup and sync tools that you can use for Windows is Free File Sync. It's a free and open source tool that you can use to sync files across devices, over a network, and even to the cloud. And unlike programs like Arclone, a program I've covered in the past, that can also be used for backup and syncing, Free File Sync has a real-time sync that's easy to set up. So let's check it out. Free File Sync can be downloaded from the freefilesync.org website. There is a donation edition that includes additional features, including auto-updating, parallel copying, email notifications, and a portable version. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and grab the one from Windows. Installation is pretty standard and very cool. Instead of showing you ads in the installation, they'll show you some cool pictures of animals. Once installation is complete, you should see two icons on your desktop, Free File Sync and Real Time Sync. This Free File Sync opens up the GUI or graphical app and this Real Time Sync application, which lets you set up Real Time Sync, which we're going to look at later on. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go to Tools Options and change this to the light mode because while I like dark themes, do not like it in this application. So let's take a look at what we can do here. Inside my user folder, I've got some media files including my music, pictures, and videos, along with documents that I like to sync to this USB drive labeled E. Inside the main program here, I can click on Browse to browse for folders, or I can drag entire folders into the application. So I'll add my documents. Then when you want to add more, you can add another folder. And you can rearrange these how you see fit, and they'll be synced in the order in which you have them listed here. Next, where we want to sync to. For my documents, I'm going to store it on E, and I'll store it in a folder called Home Sync, in a folder called Documents, and I'll do the same for pictures, music, and videos. If you hit Compare, it'll show you what will happen once you run the sync. In this case, it's going to copy new items to the right. Once we're ready, we just hit synchronize. It shows some stats and start. And while it's doing the sync, it gives us progress. Sync is complete. And if I go to my E drive, home sync, I've got my music, documents, videos, and pictures. If I run this sync again, we see it completes instantly since I've made no changes to the source files. Now by default, Free File Sync does two-way syncing, meaning if you add, update, or remove files from either the source or destination, the next time you sync, the changes will be made on the other side. If I delete this holiday budget planner, run a comparison, and then sync, we'll see that the holiday planner document is removed from my C drive documents. You can save your sync setup for use in the future by clicking on save. That way, you don't have to set all of this up again. If you click on the cog icon next to compare, you're presented with some synchronization options. Under comparison, you can tell Free File Sync how to compare files before syncing. By default, it's set to file time and size, which checks modification time and size. File content, which checks the contents of the file, which I believe this option is slower. And file size, which compares based on file size. If you look on the far left here, under all folder pairs, we can actually select these options on a per folder basis. So if by default we set the comparison to file time and size, maybe for videos, I only want to compare based on size. So I can check use local settings and file size. So all my other folders will check based on file time and size, but videos will check based on file size. Other options to make note of inside of comparison are the ignore errors, which allows the sync to continue going so long as there are no critical errors, and automatic retry. This is good for reconnecting to network drives if there's a disconnection or something. If we click on filter, we can tell Free File Sync what files and folders to include in our sync and what files and folders to exclude. What I like about this program is by default, it already has some common system files and folders added to the exclude, such as these thumb.db files, recycle bin folders, and system volume information folders. Here inside of my music folder, I've got a couple of artists and albums, and I've added some additional songs to my library in these FLAC files. However, I don't want them synced to my eMusic folder, so I can filter them using patterns such as star. And this will filter out all FLAC files. 
or you can filter out a specific folder like so. And if I run comparison, we see that only one folder is added to the sync. I'll go ahead and remove that filter and we'll go ahead and sync those files. And that's it. If you click on the show examples link here, it'll open up a page that shows you how to properly filter files and folders using these patterns. In addition to these filters, filtering files and folders, you can also filter by file size, minimum and maximum, along with time span. So you can come up with some pretty complex filters. And again, these can be applied on a per folder basis. Let's look at the synchronization option. Again, by default, it's set up for two-way sync, but we also have mirror, which will mirror the destination with the source, update, which will only copy new and updated files, and you can set up a custom sync. To use free file sync as a proper backup program, you will want to stick with the update option. Under delete and overwrite, you can tell free file sync how to retain files. The default is to send all deleted and overwritten files to the recycle bin. You can permanently delete the files and there is versioning. For this example, I'm going to use a mirror sync. And next I'm going to set where I want to store my versions or older files that have been updated and deleted. I'll store them in home sync in the folder called versions. We have options to apply a name pattern such as timestamp or timestamp for files. I'll do regular timestamp and you can set file version limits. So keep the last 30 days, the minimum number of versions to keep and the maximum number of versions to keep. I'll hit OK on this. Then I'll come to my documents, modify this presentation file, save it and let's run our sync or mirror in this case, compare. And if we look inside of documents or on the E drive, we see it's been updated. And inside of home sync versions, we have a folder that has the old version of presentation. So that's versioning with free file sync. Generally, when you want to sync with free file sync, you have to open up the main app and then manually run your sync. However, a faster way to do this is by saving your project as a free file sync batch script. You can go to file, save as batch job, or click this little icon here. You can set to run minimize and auto close once the sync is done, along with ignoring errors. You can set what to do when the job is done, sleep or shut down, and then save. I'll save to the desktop. Now what I'll do is just delete everything. Then run our sync by just double clicking it and we see we can now run our sync without going through the entire main application. We can schedule free file sync backups or sync using Windows Task Scheduler in this batch file that it created. To do so, we'll just open up Task Scheduler and inside of here, I'm just going to create a folder called free file sync. And inside of that, I'll just create a basic task, call it home sync. And I'll have this set to run daily, every day at 12 a.m. Then what we want to do is start a program. We want to look for free file sync executable. And then under add argument, we want to put the path to our batch file. In my case is here on the desktop. So I'll just copy the path and paste it in this field. Next, finish. Go ahead and run that batch script to automate my sync. We can simulate this by running the home sync manually and it flashed at the bottom right here, but it was instant since there were no changes to the files. It gets better because free file sync has real time syncing. I double click on the real time sync application. What we can do is import our batch script that we created and then start. And then down here or somewhere in the notification area, you should see this little red icon letting you know that real time sync is activated. If it starts flashing red and gray, that means there are sync errors, which you can look through by right clicking. Just be careful that you don't click the X because if you do, you will cancel the sync. You want to click on start always if you want to continue syncing. Here I'm on my documents and I've got my E documents. If I were to remove, say these two documents here, we should see the changes take effect on the E drive. And as per our delete policy, those files that were deleted were sent to the recycle bin. If I bring them back, they should appear back in my eDrive.
you can set up real time sync to start automatically when you log on to your computer. First, go back to the main window here. And what you want to do is save the file list as a real time sync file. It gets a little confusing when you have these batch files in the real time sync files, but just know that the batch script just tells free file sync what to sync and the real time sync just tells it to start syncing from this batch script. So now we'll open up task scheduler again, just modify our task. Instead of opening up free file sync, we're going to open up real time sync and we're going to copy the path to our real time sync file and paste that into the add argument field. And we're going to have this set to run when we log on and that's it now whenever i log on the real-time sync will start immediately and i can simulate that by using the run on here and our real-time sync is now activated lastly i'd like to show you how to set up cloud syncing with free file sync using google drive as an example so i'm back at the main application and i'm going to be syncing my documents and to sync to the cloud what i'll do is click on this little cloud icon next to browse on the right and we can choose Google Drive, SFTP or regular FTP. Simply add connection. You'll be asked to sign into your Google account. Select the folder that you want to sync to. I'll sync to a folder called Home Sync on my Google Drive account and then hit OK. For this sync, I'm going to set it up as an update and synchronize. It's going to upload five megs and it's complete. If I bring in Google Drive from my main system here, I've got a folder called Home Sync with those documents that I just synced. It is possible to use free file sync to back up or sync to other cloud providers such as Amazon S3, Backblaze, and iDrive with tools like Arclone or other third-party applications that can easily mount those storage providers in Windows Explorer like I have here. I can simply browse to that location and start my sync. And if I bring up S3 browser, I can see that those files have been synced to my Backblaze bucket. One of the things I find interesting with this program is that these policies, including sync type, can be done on a per folder basis, meaning that you could set up folders to either sync two way, one way, or only update, all as part of the same backup or sync operation. Where in most backup programs, you need to select one of these type of backups and then apply policies to them. I've started using Free File Sync as a replacement to Synology Drive clients since I no longer use the Synology NAS. And I require real time sync across my desktop and laptop. And Free File Sync has been doing a wonderful job of that. And it's reliable. I don't have any corrupt files or weird sync oddities. And it just works. I've tried other applications like Sync Thing, and I've also checked out Good Sync. But I prefer this application because I don't like web based dashboards. And this is completely free. If you like the program, please do consider donating. You can pay any amount and get that donation version, which is sweet.